So in my very first system dynamics engineering lecture, my professor was giving us the whole spiel about why is system dynamics important. And in his examples, he brought up one of these. So let's talk big picture. SysD at its most fundamental level is all about what happens when we give an input x to a system and get an output y. Under this definition, so much of the world can be modeled with system dynamics if we know enough about our system. Like take for example, putting an input bread into a system, our toaster, then we can determine the state of our system output, toast. But what my professor was really getting at with the little drone was that knowledge of this particular system's dynamics is critical to flying this drone. The circuit board inside the drone takes input from the controller, such as our desired throttle, pitch, yaw, or roll, and then determines the requisite power output to each of the four rotors in order to achieve our desired motion. Now, here's the important part. He said, Without this system, we would not be able to tell each motor how much power to get in order to still get a desirable output. But then he joked, ah, well, maybe I could. Mm, let's prove him wrong. Now, since rigging up a system in which we could individually and in real time change the power going to each rotor isn't that feasible, I've mocked up a quick model of a quadcopter and rigged some propeller animations for it. Now. Let's import this into a game engine, set up the physics, hitboxes, and code in order to continue going. This shouldn't take long. I'm so tired. All right. So now that we've got everything set up, without further ado, let's dive in. Okay. So now that we're in our world, you can see that we have our quadcopter and a big hoop in front of us and to our side. So right here, these are our hands. These are going to be what controls our quadcopter. On the left touchpad here, up and down is going to be our throttle, just like this. And then left and right on this left thumbpad is going to be our yaw. So let's get some altitude. And you can see as I move left, we rotate. And as I move right, we rotate. Now this right touchpad, this is where it's going to get messy. This is the touchpad that's going to be controlling our pitch and our roll. So if I push forward on this, you can see we rotate forward and a little bit to the side. Okay. And then if I push right, we're going to roll right. And if I push left, we're going to roll left a little bit out of control. All right, so we've got our controls. All right, so after a little bit of practice, we're flying pretty nicely. So here's our throttle, here's our yaw, spin back around and then pitch, as well as roll. So as a system, this thing is working flawlessly. Now let's see if we can get it through this hoop. So we'll take it nice and easy, tilt forward and we're through. Go ahead and bring it back now. Nice gentle landing. Ooh, that's beautiful. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and move on to our right, this rotating hoop. See how well I can get it through here. Not spinning too, too quick, but it's no walk in the park either. Oh, and we hit a little bit there. Let's take off again and see if we can get through this flawlessly. And as a reminder, this is using the traditional quadcopter controls. So let's take our opportunity and we're through. So it would seem that my professor is at least half correct in his assumption that using typical quadcopter controls, we can take our system and we can drive it to a specified position or get a specified velocity, such as through a hoop like you just saw. But here's the crux of the argument. Can we break up the system of the four rotors into four individual systems where we manually apply power to each system and still maintain control over our system? So in order to do this, we have these four dials in front of me. We can take the dials and we can individually apply power to one of them or to two of them at the same time. Obviously, I'm limited by two hands, so we'll only be able to drive, in theory, two at a time. 
So I think the main strategy for me here in order to accomplish this objective, since I only have two hands, is to use the front rotor and the back rotor and apply power to them simultaneously and just slowly change the differential in power between the front and the back rotor to gain either forward or backward motion. Once, if we can manage that, we'll move on to the rotating ring. We're through. Holy cow, we're in. All right, let's see, two for two, a little bit quicker here. Oh, count it. So now that we've got a couple runs through the stationary hoop, let's go ahead and move on to this rotating ring. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna stop myself right there. First, I wanna preface this with the fact that this footage is sped up by 600%. Now, I'm not kidding when I say that I literally have hours of footage like this, just trying to get a single clean pass through the hoop to prove that we don't need any fancy smart systems or engineering to be able to control our quadcopter adequately. But every try went a little something like what you're seeing. I would establish a baseline power level to get the drone hovering comfortably and try to tweak the power differentials to forwards, backwards, and side to side, all the while trying to manage my altitude. I'd make minor adjustments until, inevitably, as you can see, all hell broke loose and we lost control. However, in all the hours of practice attempts, that never happened. So in the end, I guess that yes, we technically did prove my professor wrong. We didn't need any fancy control system in order to be able to accomplish a basic objective like flying a quadcopter through a stationary hoop. However, there is the rather large elephant in the room that's crying about just how poorly trying to precisely maneuver the quadcopter went. But there's an important lesson in this realization. While we proved that we didn't need any fancy control theory in order to accomplish a very basic objective, much the same way that we could try toasting toast on a bonfire without a toaster, but these things, these systems, help immensely. And that is what system dynamics is all about. It's about breaking down or building up these vastly complex systems that let us see exactly how they work and how we can improve them, how we can better them. So, Professor, I was right about not needing a control system in order to be able to fly a drone. However, you were right about me needing a control system in order to fly a drone in anything but a straight line. So in the end, I guess, let's call this one a draw.